step into the latest installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast number 59, titled, Do You Really Understand the Urgency of Preparedness? Featuring Mike from COT on the End Generation Project. This episode originally aired on March 29, 2024, exclusively on counciloftime.com. This episode is a rebroadcast podcast and delves into Bible study and daily excellence esteemed speaker Mike from COT. We do apologize for falling behind with daily posting. This is a huge job. You wouldn't believe the amount of this. And that that goes into making a YouTube video, whether it is a rebroadcast or not. Thank you for your patience and loyalty. Please drop us a line. We love hearing from you. We're honored to bring you daily insights from Michael from Council of Time, a renowned Christian speaker known for his focus on end-time prophecies and preparedness. For further enlightenment, visit the Council of Time optical website linked in the description. Our dedication extends to offering truth, hope, and support to those battling addiction and seeking spiritual guidance. Your support drives our mission, empowering us to guide individuals towards truth, sobriety, and readiness for the challenges ahead. Explore exclusive content on our new locals community crafted for our EGP family. We are pleased to announce a merchandise store will go live this weekend. See our recent community posts for more on that. Lastly, huge gratitude for our contributors on the End Generation Project's success. Before getting into today's rebroadcast podcast, do you really understand the urgency of preparedness episode 59? We like to acknowledge the remarkable growth of this channel, reflecting the hunger among believers in these end-generation times. It's truly a blessing that our content is reaching audiences worldwide, with translations available in over 12 languages. As we continue this journey together, we're dedicated to keeping this podcast ad-free, made possible by your subscription. Remember to subscribe, like, and share for daily excellence. We cherish your feedback and the incredible stories you share. Now, let's delve into today's podcast title. Do you really understand the urgency of preparedness? Tune in to the rebroadcast of End Generation Project's podcast, Hash 59, with Pastor Paul and Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Okay, everybody, I think that uh, that's the best we can do for now. I need one of you guys to do me a favor. Somebody look up how many sunspots we have right now. Can somebody do that? We didn't make it, by the way. We didn't make it. That's very unfortunate. We did not make it. I was hoping we would. We did not. Somebody do me a favor. Look, look at the number of, uh, look at the number. I want you guys to look at the date, 328, 2024. If you would, please. I want to help you guys out so you can get the right uh, data here. I know I'm a quirky person. But I want you guys to see this, to understand this. Okay. Let's see. We are looking at, wait a minute, let me mute something here. Receive feedback. Big time. Oh, we didn't make it. Come on, guys. Don't do this now. I've been having, you guys know what's happening right now, don't you? Anybody know what's happening right now? We have uh, a couple of problems. We do. Uh, Let's see. Was that amazing? Well, 327, 41, number of sunspots, 41. 326, number of sunspots, 53. 325, number of sunspots, 63. 324, number of sunspots, 54. Sounds random, right? 328, number of sunspots, 40. We did not make it at all. Not one bit we didn't make it. Okay, so 
if you guys heard me last night with uh, Pastor Paul, I was kind of emphasizing some solar problems, bad solar problems. Yesterday, you guys do know, we had, um, I believe it was, detected uh, yesterday. Um, I'm looking at, uh, we, we had a detection, a few detection, a few, not just one. We had a couple, actually. Uh, quivers coming off the sun. Right? A couple of issues with the sun. And uh, there you go. Somebody hit the number right on the head. There you go. 39 to 40. Yeah. 39 to 40. We, we have some issues happening here that affect the earth. We're talking about the earth. Although, it would be so nice if that weren't the case. The sun is about to change. It's, it's in its process of changing. It's uh, polarity, you could say. But so is the earth for some odd reason. It is not fully known why the earth is doing the same thing. But it's happening. Since in the last 20, 30 days, uh, we've had some major electronic instabilities surrounding the earth they've not been stable at all in fact today they're doing emergency maneuvers on a few satellites today they are um which means <clears throat> that's because the like the earth's magnetic field was no longer protecting a certain area and so uh, they had to do a few maneuvers Concerning the earth. If you guys have low volume, I'm up as far as I can go. I can't go up any further. I'm stuck where I'm at right now. So hopefully you can adjust your volume a little and fix it. I can't do anything here. I can't do a thing. Uh, the whole system, the all the audio for some odd reason, took a turn to the left. It did. Now that could have been us doing a development or... It's just one of those uh, things with electronics. One of those things. Somebody says volume is great. That's good to hear. Anyway, so I was hoping we'd make it through the 40 days for about 10 reasons without major incidents uh, from the sun. That didn't take place. In fact, it's almost like it waited until the 40-day mark, which was a calculated date. Just so you understand that. It was a calculated date of activity of the sun. And um, I was hopeful we'd get through the 40 days without activity on the sun. That's only one part. The other part has to do with witches. But back to the sun. <clears throat> we didn't make it. In fact, uh, right at the end, right at the end of the 40-day mark, the sun started doing its wicked shimmy, right? So if you guys look at, if you look at uh, the solar charts, you'll begin to see solar activity picking up right there at the end of this 40-day mark, right? Now, you guys can accept or not accept what you want to hear, right? I, I normally, when I track things, right, I don't do the theoretical thing. You should know that by now. All of you who have been in COT, I don't spend time on theoretical things because we have very real issues we have to deal with. We have real issues we have to deal with. And so when, when dealing with dates, activity, uh, we're looking for feedback, right? hoping that no feedback comes, but looking for feedback. So it's more of a precision type of hunt we're doing, right, based off a lot of data. In this case, the estimations and the hopeful estimations did not work out. The sun reacted to something that uh, nobody's going to talk about, right? Nobody's going to talk about what the sun reacted to. 
And believe it or not, the sun is very precise in what it does. It is. And it, this sun is not doing what it's doing randomly. And if you guys have been listening to COT for a while, there's no way somebody can predict any solar activity uh, outside of 30 days, 60 days. That just can't be done, right? Unless the sun is more precise than most people have uh, figured out, okay? The sun is not some random ball of gas. It just does things, you know, randomly. That's not what's happening here. And all of you guys, right, you guys who have been tracking some of my uh, talks and quirky dates and things of that nature, you should know this by now because you cannot predict. You cannot predict the, the activity of the sun that far out. Just can't do that. And you can't do that. So in this case, the sun reacted to something, and I was really hoping it would not, because that would give us, you know, a little more time at least. Well, let's just say a little more security of time. But it didn't. It did not. Which means, uh, in comparison to what we have seen, we are about to see the sun begin, for the first time, begin to erupt with some uh, pretty high numbers, pretty high values, pretty high impacts, okay? You guys know about the 28th, you know, the 28th, and, and, and more than likely today is just not over yet, but the uh, 28th, the closing of this, th these, uh, this interval, you know about the closing of that interval uh, that we set in February. It is now closing off, and it, unfortunately, unfortunately, the interaction space between uh, something nobody talks about out there and our sun, that interactive space is now beginning to react uh, quite a bit with our sun which is unfortunate, uh, because what that means is, although we, there are some things that mainstream scientists don't understand, they have no grip on yet, uh, there are some things in the sun that physics does not explain, like why the earth, or, or why the sun, by the way, flips its poles. They don't understand that yet. They don't understand that process. Physics cannot answer that question. Right? Can't do that. The interaction this interaction you're, you're talking about some phenomenal forces that will continue to grow the hope was we were still in the safe zone right? still outside uh, this interactive area between something out there nobody talks about uh, that we were still outside of a specific zone that would not affect our sun in a big way right? these subtle and small changes that are happening in the sun these reactive uh, predictive reactive uh, phenomena on the sun is a direct consequence of something that nobody talks about, and which means that this last period was a, a real telltale type period, right? Because it's almost as if it waited until this last mark, which was a lip of a uh, some pretty high charges that affects both Earth and the Sun. We were hoping it would pass. If it did pass, if we had minimal or standard solar activity, that meant we would have at least, you know, a couple more years to, to not endure some of the more massive changes in the Earth, right? Because we did not. There are a slew of uh, predicted times that the sun is going to be quite volatile concerning the Earth. It, most of those sunspots, by the way, see, as this solar cycle continues, just in case you don't know, as it continues, the sunspots gravitate towards the poles to the equator, right? Uh, they normally do that. They gravitate to the from the pole to the equator. This allows scientists to come up with their little butterfly charts and read those charts. You know how they track things. They like graphs. It's actually a good way to see... Uh, over time, some of the energy output of the sun, what these solar cycles are actually doing. In this case, 
um, things are becoming too predictive. Too predictive. The energy output from the sun is over the mark. Solar activity is well before. The, this, the activity we're seeing now, we're not supposed to get until 2025, according to trending, according to recent activity of the sun. Which means the perturber out there, I'm going to call it the perturber out there, is closing in on our sun. As it closes in, right, those intervals get shorter and shorter and shorter, and everything becomes premature. Everything. All this, all these things we've been looking at in Revelation. Every single last thing we've been seeing in Revelation, right, is not absent uh, some of the volatility of the sun. Now we get to see the reality of these things. People have had a hint of some of the activity, but we've been highly blessed that we still have communications, uh, that we still have, you know, comforts. As time continues, we're, be, and we're talking about 2024. I can't even look past 2024. I can't do that. I'm focused on, or, or um, focused on 2024, no other day. 2024, the activity is just beginning. It is mathematically, it is increasing in a way that puts us near a peak target date too close, and too, too, too close. That means our weather phenomena is going to be greatly affected so is everything geological. And we've been seeing some massive changes in the Earth's geological, right? Areas that have been dormant for a long time and no longer dormant. Uh, I suspect this trend will continue, but it will increase in intensity. And the intensity will increase. And it is unfortunate because it, it will cause some unfavorable conditions to all of us. Now, we're not talking about the end of the world. But we could be talking about the end of power for nations. Right? That would be just not so good. I know a lot of people, they really think that, uh, you know, you're only going to have a large-scale power outage through an EMP. That's wrong. That's very wrong. Just so you know, the we have a band around the Earth that is electrical. It is highly charged, right? In the absence of that band, all these high-speed particles... Now, the first thing you're going to start saying is the auroras. They're going to go worldwide. Worldwide, right? When they go worldwide, Air Force is going to have a, they're going to have a daunting task on their hands to salvage as many satellites as they can. You guys do realize that the GPS satellites are owned by the U.S. Air Force, right? You guys know that. The, the Air Force satellites are owned or the GPS satellites are owned by the U.S. Air Force for the entire world. For all of us. For all missile guidance, both enemy and friend. Just so you guys know this. If we start losing the GPS satellites, it will affect everything. That means blind missiles, blind navigation, um, uh, blind everything, right? Air Force has a very intricate job, very demanding job. It's an hour-to-hour -hour job. They have a target list of a lot of things they have to, you know, they have to meet a mandate every single day or it's all for naught. With the changes in the sun, with the changes in the magnetosphere of the earth, and it goes hand in hand, as we get more and more turbulent, and we're talking about in no less than a week, there are going to be some turbulent areas in the earth in no less than a week that will no doubt affect the job of the Air Force, communications on the earth, power in certain places of the earth, quirky things will begin to happen on the earth in less than one week, not four months and five months and all this kind of stuff. No, this is, this is a very immediate issue that will continue throughout the year. Throughout the year. The anomaly, the southern anomaly, is growing. Growing um, at a very alarming rate. An alarming rate. All of a sudden, it starts expanding. All of a sudden. As, as of 2024, probably uh, last month when we 
maybe a couple of weeks, maybe at the beginning of February, it began to grow too much. Right? It's their telltale signs. This thing is growing. And so you have these no-go zones in that anomalistic region. Better now, uh, you know, they're being marked and it will reflect upon air travel. Uh, it's going to reflect on everything because it's growing. And the deal is that area is losing the protection of the magnetosphere. Right? It's, it's, it's going away. It's going away. That's going to be a big trouble spot. Just so you understand this, if we have a weakened magnetosphere, right? If we had zero solar flares, no solar flares, listen, no solar flares, but our magnetosphere was weakened to about 10% of what it is now, it would be a Carrington event every second. Do you guys understand that? That means equipment that's not plugged in will start running. Equipment that's plugged in will burn up. That's what that means. That means no GPS. And without GPS, calculations on Earth cannot be made for other automated systems. That means your computers are not going to work. Your computers operate by a clock, which can be highly affected by magnetic changes. If the timing in your processors is off, your computer is going to, you're going to have flip bits all over the place and you're going to have zero calculations. None. That means everything you're trying to save is going to be nothing. And in the Bible, did it not say that the writer is smitten with madness and the horses with blindness? Now, we don't ride horses, but we do use vehicles. In today's world, a horse would be a vehicle. If the horse is blind, it cannot navigate. Correct? We don't use horses right now. We use vehicles. Vehicles navigate by way of GPS. A blindness of a vehicle would be no GPS. None. That means something happened to the mission of the Air Force and Space Command where they absolutely failed, right? They failed to maintain those GPS satellites. If the vehicles cannot see, missiles cannot see. The only way a missile can see, and this has been a big rush, just so you now understand this, right now, or, or it has been, as of late, that missiles were guided, even self-guided missiles were guided with GPS. There's only one way to guide a missile. Outside of GPS, does anybody know what that is? Artificial intelligence. That's the only way. Through second to second observation of the terrain, of the identification of every uh, object it sees. So why do you think there's a rush in getting AI into armaments? You're starting to see it now? Because it's almost as if somebody suspects GPS is going to fail. You're starting to see it now. Why would they put AI navigation modules within military vehicles? Maybe they suspect GPS will fail. All your favorite clonos and all these different uh, uh, types of GPS are not going to work out too well. Why? Because our magnetosphere is going into a chaotic state. And the sun is building its interactions with something way out there. And it's happening now, not later, but now. Most people are not going to be aware of this. They won't pay attention to it. I'm just telling you what I know. They're not going to pay attention to it. They're going to try to do everything to explain it away until it takes them. I, until it absolutely takes them. Right? This means many things will increase in the earth and there will be telltale signs you'll be able to see. One of the telltale signs you need to watch out for are global auroras. You think something will be wrong if you start to see auroras all over the globe? Not just the standard, you know, we got overcharged and now you can see the northern lights in New York or someplace like that. No, global auroras all around the earth. That'll be a telltale sign. 
That'll be a telltale sign of the change in our magnetosphere. We are going into the chaotic activity of the magnetosphere. It'll seem solid first, as it is right now. Then it will abruptly and continuously change. As it changes, radiation is going to leak right into the earth. It will affect everything. It will. Everything. Also, there's going to be a lower dependency on the precision of most calculations. Let's go ahead and face it. The world right now utilizes computers for precision mathematics. The slightest error or build up in errors and loss of checksums is going to cause some severe problems with all the systems. And this is happening to people. That this is real. This is not theoretical. Nor is it made up. This is a real is the real deal. The auroras is one telltale sign. Right? I'm interested to see how they explain what the sun is about to do. I'll say it again. No one can calculate solar activity so far out, can they? Has anybody ever seen proof of anybody calculating solar activity? 40 days out. 60 days out, 90 days out, no, no, you'll not hear from anybody doing that, so how can it, how is somebody doing it in the first place, how is that being done, this is not to toot one's own horn, that's not what this is about, it's to get you to actually hear, to listen, to have an understanding, that there have been some long-standing lies that seem so truthful, so rational, but they're not holding up. They're just not holding up. And the sun is a bit more precise than what you think. And it's really about to go haywire. They will not give you an early warning of this because they themselves don't have an early warning of this. And it's going to cost. It's going to be costly. Very costly. It will. When solar activity no longer follows trending, no longer follows what it has been following, that's not trackable. So far it's been trackable. Now we hit the separation point. We're at that point where it's trending. It's going to veer off from all charts. All charts. Somebody says there are predictable patterns. Solar minimum and maximum, right? While people may think that is precise, it is not. There's a gap. It is a plus or minus three years. That's a big plus or minus. Three years? That's a big plus or minus, don't you think? If you go back and look at a solar minimum and maximum, you're going to find something. Not only a double dip in, in when it's at maximum, but you're also going to notice date inconsistencies. That's why they have to chart it out. That's why it's a trend line. There is a plus or minus three-year tolerance with their accuracy. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not very accurate. Three years, as, as I mean, if you're measuring uh, things over, you know, 2,000-year um, periods, fine. 500-year periods, fine. But a three-year tolerance, plus or minus three years, that's not very accurate, is it? That's the closest they've been able to come. How can somebody hit plus or minus three days? That's a bit better, don't you think? In the same area, they said it's impossible to predict. You can't predict magnetic anomalies in the sun that cause the sunspots, right? That's where the magnetics, let's say the magnetics of the sun start to build up, they cause cool spots. Now, when I say cool, I don't mean cool to the touch. It is still extremely hot. 
right? But that's almost like predicting where a sunspot's going to appear. Who can predict that? You're dealing with uh, something akin to fluid dynamics where you cannot see the inside of it, right? So there's pattern recognition. But then there's something else which takes a lot of data points. I mean, a lot of data points. It also takes some components that most people don't know about. If you think the sun is just a big gas ball, you'll never get it. The sun is not just a big gas ball. It's not what it is. Man's arrogance perpetuates such nonsense. Man teaches man about God's creation. Huh. You'd think they'd be ready for everything, wouldn't you? So let me ask you something before it ever happens. Let me ask you this. Why were they not ready for one of the biggest solar events in modern day history again? Why did they fail to forecast the next Carrington event? Hmm? I'm asking this before it ever happens because it is going to happen more than once. So why did they fail to predict that? Why did they even fail to protect themselves? They're not going to protect themselves because they won't see it coming. Always remember this. You're dealing with objects your father made. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. You're either going to believe that your father created everything, everything, or you won't believe. It's going to be either or. For those who believe that their father created all these things, right? Please don't say he's a sloppy designer. He's very precise in what he does. Look at your body. We are impossible life forms. Everything on Earth belongs on Earth, doesn't it? It is adapted to Earth. We are the only things on this Earth that are not adapted to the Earth. We're made of the elements of the Earth, but in a way where we are non-adaptable to it. Don't you find that odd or strange? Then in the Bible it says you're in this world, but not of this world. Animals are clothed, right? Birds are clothed. Everything seems to have a tolerance for all the different temperatures around the earth, but what do we have to do? We have great sensitivity to changes in temperature. We have to do special things to eat. We do. We're prone to things that the average animal would just go beyond. We don't have a built-in pharmaceutical factory within ourselves like cats and dogs and other animals who can simply lick their wounds and they start healing because they have strong antibiotics in their saliva. We don't have that. We don't. Why? Because God made the earth and everything in it and then he made mankind. Hmm. You're created. A species different to subdue this earth. Not to be one with it, but to subdue it. Caretakers, stewards of this earth. That's what you are. We don't do a good job at that either, do we? <clears throat> at any rate, in the near future, another Carrington event we will have. A few of them. Right? Now, our electronics are not like they used to be. Could an EMP take out everything, the power grid and everything else? No, it couldn't because we build things differently. And EMPs, right? We use different materials and electronics. You know what that means? That the average iPhone is going to survive an EMP. That's what it means. Because of dissipation. Because of your environment. Because of what they put in the highways. That's why. Because of what's underneath the ground with the power lines, the secondary system. Not everything is going to survive, right? Not everything. These big switches and transformers, they won't survive. Small electronics. Some of these electronics are immune to being, you know, overwhelmed with uh, EMP-type pulses. They're immune to it. But there are many things that are not, right? They already have warehouses full of transformers underneath the ground 
They keep them there because it takes seven years to build a transformer from scratch. They know they're going to have to replace them. In Revelation, in the book of Revelation, the sun does a lot of damage to humanity. The sun is responsible for quite a few things. This secondary object in which the sun is reacting to, right? And that will become obvious because everything is going to happen in one direction. What if you guys saw sunspots pull to one side of the sun? That would be quite obvious, wouldn't it? If all the sunspots gravitated towards one spot on the sun facing in a specific direction, that would make a big difference. Then you'd be able to see something has some pretty powerful forces out there causing the sun to uh, attracting, right? Attracting forces of the sun itself. We'll likely see that also. These things you'll be able to see. But you'll see them in a time when the earth is already affected. And it can actually, you know, a flip of the poles of the sun is one thing. When the earth has a pole flip, hear me on this. In the record, geologic record, when magma is moving, it has iron in it. When volcan volcanoes erupt, iron is in that, you know, the eruption. That material is mixed in and becomes part of the rock strata, right? So you can always tell the orientation of iron in those eruptions to see where the North Pole was. As you go down through the earth, you begin to see iron orientated in different directions. As you cut down through the rock strata, you're going through years of time. There have been a countless number of flips, magnetic flips in the earth, right? But within those bigger time regions that could be 200 million years, this is by their calculations, there are smaller regions, smaller regions that dealt with extinction level events on the earth. When whole groups of animals, when continents, had all their animals wiped away. And those were in 200 year to 1,000 year intervals. 200 to 1,000 year intervals. Which means, when, when you look at all of that data returning, because it's in quite a good order to be able to track, almost like orbital rotation of something else. So it's not happening randomly. The cause of that is external. And whatever the cause is, it seems to be on a timer. Because it happens not in random, you know, not at random times throughout history. But very sequential times in history. Right? An ordered time in history. Now the only thing that happens like that is the effects from the sun dealing with material on the earth. And when you start tracking that... You start to, you can, you can match changes in biology with the rotation of the sun. Same thing goes with eruptions on the earth. Major eruptions on the earth carry iron particles in them. That stuff has solidified, causing, you know, mountains to form, this, that, and the other. But it has iron in it. When you start looking at these layers, you begin to see something like a large durational orbit of something else causing this cyclical problem to happen ever so often. And it looks like we're right in the middle of one. Well, not the middle, the starting gates of one. They track the magnetic influences in the Earth, right? To see if it was chaotic or not based on radiation that was absorbed in that rock strata. Same thing is happening now. As it turns out, our southern anomaly in the Earth, right? The entire southern region of the Earth at one point was burnt up. Not the northern region. The southern region was burned up. We're going to see that again, but we, they don't know what hemisphere is going to burn this time. That deals with how the Earth is tilted when the event actually takes place. It will happen from the sun. 
but we don't know what season we're going to be in, right? We could be tilted towards or away from the sun at that time. Whatever region is tilted towards the sun, well, it's going to heat up big time. And we just don't know that. When, when you're going through the four seasons here on Earth, that determines who's, who's tilted towards the sun and who's not, right? There is a double wobble effect that takes place also. You guys have heard me mention that. That happens also within this cycle. And that double wobble has already begun. Do they hide the data? Yes and no. If you knew what you were looking for, you could go and extract the data from the Internet. But you're going to have to do some hunting and some filtering, right? But yes, you can find it. You can absolutely find it. All the data you need, you can find. The problem is this. Whatever data you collected is always going to be dictated by the theory that you believe. That's the problem. So if you believe in a specific theory, you're going to discard certain gaps of data, certain types of data. Right? If you start collecting all data just to see what picture forms before you, you start seeing the truth. But the Earth is uh, really starting to go through some things. Anyway, we did not escape the interaction of that thing out there with the sun. We didn't escape it. If we would have had solar activity at the 20th day or something like that, or outside of this gap of time, we would have been fine. We would have been fine. And yes, it does coincide with uh, their dark worship. It does. It does. See, folks, listen, that's why folks, people like uh, those folks that look at the sun, like uh, BP Earthwatch and, and uh, folks like, uh, and, and, and thank God for Pastor Paul, right? Because when you go back and listen to these guys who speak on his, uh, on his presentations, they're passionate about what they're doing, right? They're passionate. All of us are human, but they're passionate. And, and um, it is a blessing to have people who would actually go after certain subjects like that because the average person won't do it. See, to go forward with information that nobody else has, you had to be pretty bold. You know that, don't you? You had to be bold. Folks can say what they want about anybody they want. But let me share this with you. If God puts something in you, do you know how many people will not let it out of them because it does not match what the world is saying? So you have to be pretty bold to go forward with what the Lord gives you, don't you? Uh, especially when you don't have all the answers. Right? So when things are put together like that, they deal with subjects that are going to affect every human being on the face of the earth. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Some of you guys have learned a great deal from these guys, too. That's another good thing, right? I'm mentioning this to tell you something. Always try to understand what the Lord is doing. Stay away from that realm of criticism. Stay away from that, because that will say you. There are people right now who have no idea of what's happening all around them. And they will suffer for it. They will. All of us have suffered at some point in our lives because we were foolish enough not to have taken certain precautions, right? We were not good stewards over what the Lord had revealed to us. And we played around, took the easy path, and we suffered for it, didn't we? So we know we can suffer in this earth. There are going to be lots of people who suffer because in the time they could, they could have absorbed what they needed. They didn't. They sought to entertain themselves. They won't escape the suffering. They could have taken things seriously. They could have prepared. But they didn't. Right? A lot of people ask me, well, um, uh, Mike, you're different. You hit the top of the subject. You never really go into depth. For what? Go into depth for what? God put people in place to go into depth for. That's not my area. But the Lord put people in place for just about every subject out there. And I do read a lot of negative things that people say about all of those folks, especially me. I read them a lot. And, but the negativity is almost like a person that does not want to know. 
that a train is coming, their car is stuck on the tracks, right? And a train is coming. And they just don't want to look at the train thinking that's going to minimize the blow. That's not going to happen. God will put something in the spirit of a person, and that person cannot shake it loose. They can't let it go. Do you know that? It is like fire that works up within you. No matter what you do, you're going to be brought back to that same thing. Try to look at people in that respect. Try the Spirit, by the Spirit. Ensure that Christ Jesus is involved. Don't get intertwined in a person's doctrine. Why? Because we all change. Not one of us is the same way we were 30 years ago. Not one. That's why I never waste my time criticizing anybody. Because I know this. If a person truly believes in Christ, then Christ will raise them. That means they're not going to be the same person in the future that they are right now. That's what it means. They can talk all the doctrine they want to. So long as they believe in Christ, Christ has responsibility to raise them. That's why I don't criticize. I don't waste my time criticizing anybody. There are things I believe in right now. If the Lord continues to raise me, I'm going to change too. We will all change. We have that common ground in Christ, spiritual conviction. And the Lord has put plenty of people in place to educate his people on what's happening. Here's the problem, though. You have the world saying one thing, and you have God's people saying something else. And you have to decide what you're going to believe. That's what you have to decide. You should already know, I don't line up with the world, with their doctrine, their way of doing things are very convincing. That's your home of comfort, the world is. No matter what you say, the world is your home, it is your comfort. So that when you hear the world speaking of something, you're prone to take comfort in what the world says. When a person is giving something by the living God, right, it's going to be opposite. It's going to be so contrary to what the world is saying. You're going to have no confidence in it because you're not used to hearing it. And whoever brings that forward is going to have to be a bold one to speak against everybody out there and to take everything that goes with it. But if they operate by conviction, then they're going to see Jimmy Crack Corn inside continue with whatever the Lord gave them because they're going to be the first believer of what the Lord has given them. So then a small salute to those guys who operate by conviction, who go forward in the face of all those who would say all manner of evil against them, and that yet they go forward with what the Lord has given them. Hats off to them. I give no head off to the one who reserves it, who won't tell anything. They have some things to work out. Right? You guys know I come forward with some weird things. I'm just weird. Right? Strange things you never heard of. Or things you're heard of, but I explain them quite differently. Because when you operate by conviction, there's no way. You can believe the world again. doesn't mean the world is wrong and everything. No, it does not. But when you start living your life by a filter from the Lord, when he gives you that nudging, things will change. Somebody says, so then, Mike from Ronald Ward, do you think that going to Dallas for the event Pastor Paul is doing wouldn't be a good idea? No, I'm not saying that. It's, it's up to you. You, When it comes to, listen, how many people, you guys remember I told you guys about what I saw of Dallas spiritually. The fire is coming from beneath and above, right? Now, it has not taken place yet. Not all the way. So, just like those people God touched in times old and the people he touches now, sometimes you can get something, right? Whoever listens to somebody else who is given something by the living God, you're still responsible to operate by what the Lord has given you. Even when you hear something from someone else, you cannot operate by what somebody else has said. You have to go to the Messiah yourself and operate by the truth of what the Lord has given you. 
The Lord will let you know when things are unsafe, right? He will not speak by your paranoia. He will not speak by your fear. God will always speak by truth. So you're not going to have a bunch of feelings of fear and that be the Lord. That's not going to happen that way. You're not going to have a bunch of feelings of paranoia and that's the Lord. He doesn't work that way. God will always speak by truth. He'll always speak by truth. And when you receive anything from the Lord, there's a boldness that comes with it to believe it in the first place. That's what you watch out for. God speaks with clarity. You will know it through your bones not to go somewhere when the Lord is speaking. The key is to follow Christ Jesus, not men. Not men. Be a compliment to your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Right? Don't take anybody's word for anything. Go to the Lord and have the Lord instruct you. That way you compliment your brothers and your sisters. If you listen to mankind, you're going to interpret what they say by your own mind. That's, that's not going to work out too good. Right? It's not. If you compliment your brother and your sister, your sister gives a, say a, a brother gives a warning. of a, He says, stay out of California. Right? And so you have a thousand people who move away from California based on what he said. And you have another thousand people who seek the Lord. And they say, okay, that's a true word. But we're going to go to California this year. The Lord will tell us when to go. Those people who went to California because they waited for the Lord are going to compliment the brother. Because when the time comes, when California becomes a danger, when God brings what he has given mankind to fruition, they're going to be given that unction to get up out of that place, right? Should it go that way? But the rest of the folks are going to blame that person and say, hey, you said California was dangerous, and so we moved for no reason. When you operate by your own, you know, mental abilities based in the earth, conviction is not conviction, but fear becomes your conviction. You're going to mess up every single time. Think about the folks when I started talking about the East Coast being underwater. That hasn't changed, right? And a lot of people got scared of the East Coast as though it was going to happen immediately. You guys remember that? Let me, let me tell you this. When that event takes place, uh, people are going to sit down and say, I wish, I, I wish I'd have known this four to eight years ago. That's what they're going to say. I wish I would have known this at least 48 years ago. But they did know it 48 years ago. People always do that. I wish I had known about this. I wish I had known about that. But see, the problem is, they have to learn to listen to the Creator themselves. God will send people that will tell you of His Word, but when it's time to do something, you have to be able to listen to the Messiah. Always remember that. They can advise you on what the Lord has given them as far as an overall event, as far as timing. You must be able to hear the Messiah. The Messiah is not going to warn a serpent. He's going to warn the obedient. He will not warn those who are condemned. Do you know that? He won't. Remember when Jesus said, who warned you to flee? I'm going to paraphrase a damnation to come. He was talking to the Pharisees. In other words, who gave you the warning? You're the reason it's coming to destroy you, and you're the ones that are warned? No. So then a major key is your obedience to what the Lord has given you. Just simply learn to obey what the Lord has given you. Not to obey what you think the Lord has given everybody else, but learn to obey what the Lord has given you. When I'm talking, for example, I may say something that's absolutely true, but it may be something the Lord did not give to you specifically. You cannot obey something the Lord did not give to you. You cannot act on something the Lord did not give to you. See, that way you're not fooled by any man, any person. Obey what the Lord has given you. If I happen to say something 
and God has put that same thing in you, then obey it. If I say something, but the Lord has not given that to you, it is not for you. Do you see how that works? It's not going to be for you. Always remember that. There are too many people in this day and age that are fooling each other. They're causing people to live miserable lives. They are. A lot of people are taking full advantage of people. And I told you at the beginning of the year, this is the year when all those things in the darkness are going to be brought to the light. So all these people you've, in fact, I said this, all those people you follow in the world, you're going to learn the truth of them. All those people you look up to in the world, you're going to learn the truth of them. They must, they must, they must be exposed because if they're not, and this is not by other people, but by the living God, if they're not, then God's people are going to be fooled into following things that are already condemned. Time for us to see the truth. And unfortunately, that truth begins with understanding the nature of what we're about to go through. Yes, we're about to go through something. 2024 is a very revealing year. When I come back, I'll talk about more of that because we have, a, we have bad solar problems. We also have a magnetosphere problem in the earth right now. Well, of, all, of all the problems we could ever face, the sun and the magnetic field of the earth are of the utmost importance. If you can understand those two things, you'll understand quite a bit about what's happening. You, uh, the hot days approach quickly. When the fires begin, the chaos will also begin, as it always does. When people get hot, they get irritated. With power failures and rolling blackouts, these are the conditions to come, which is why I beg of all of you to understand what the escape plan is for your respective city. Do your due diligence. You should have a map, an atlas, something, so that you can navigate in the event. You know how many people people get stuck in fires? I have no doubt in my mind that this year you could very well read of an article where a thousand people were trapped inside of a fire zone and they could not get out. That's avoidable right now if people would just take the proper steps and have an understanding of what to do in the case of a fire. The fires are coming. The fires are most certainly coming. But are you familiar with the place that you live in to know how to get out? Do you know that everybody's going to try to escape at the same time? When fires do break out, panic will also break out. You can't just come up with a plan, Johnny, on the spot right then and there if you're not used to operating in high-stress conditions or life-or-death conditions. Best to look at a map now. Don't turn away from it and say, well, I don't want to deal with that right now because those people who say, I don't want to deal with this right now, they never deal with anything. And they're normally the ones hurt the most by these events. Don't be that person. Do your due diligence for your families, those you love, your friends. If you live in a high rise and you say, well, there's no forest. Well, guess what? What if you lost electricity in that high rise? You're going to sit there in your building and burn up? No. No, the exits. You'd be surprised how many people live in these places and they don't know all the exits. Children in schools, right? Can you believe that kids, kids do not know where all the bathrooms are in a school? Do you know that? They don't know. They don't know where all the bathrooms are. And we're talking about kids who have been there the entire year, who've been there multiple years. They do not know where all the bathrooms are. They could know, but they don't know. No 
know the condition of the place you live in. Know the escape routes, the plans of the city. We should have one, especially this year. Especially this year. As a personal responsibility, as nobody else's responsibility but yours. When the fires begin, you guys had an example of Texas. You did. And thank God that was a that was a, a flat region, very sparse. The vegetation was sparse, but it was still fuel. Have a plan. Whatever works for fire, always think of the water, too. The floods are coming, too. The floods are coming. Be aware of those things, so you will have dealt with them. Right? You will have dealt with them. You will have done your due diligence. No one moves into a house and never looks at the whole house. Right? When you go to sleep at night, do you lock every door or just one window? When you're going to secure something, don't you check to see every way of entry of a thief? Yes, you do. Is not that analogy used in the Bible regarding a thief? The strong man of a house, you know that goes for all of our situations. The strong man is that person in charge. Had he known the thief was going to break in, he would not have suffered. Right? Things to be unlocked. The irresponsibility of not checking the front door. Things of that nature. Correct? Well, you're that person. And a thief is coming. And it will steal whatever it can steal. And that thief will be fire. Flock. Invaders, solar events, great hail. It'll come in many forms. Are you prepared for them? It's almost like the Lord is showing the entire country that we have a flawed mentality. We've had a border crisis. For more than a hundred years. Do you know that? We've had a border crisis for more than a hundred years. Why have we had a border crisis for more than a hundred years? Why are the Christians seeing it? See, when Christians see something, you better believe it's purposed. You had better believe it's purposed. We have a border problem because the world, the worldly, secular people cannot make up their minds on how they want to secure that border. And some don't want to secure the border. Now, if you leave your safety in their hands, you have no safety. Just like the Lord told us, the world is not going to make any provisions when the real deal comes. They're going to drop everything and go and hide. They will not help you. But the Lord has given us wisdom to have an understanding that the world will ignore everything until it kills them. And in a panic, they'll seek to save themselves. We're not to operate like that. We're to be good stewards prepared so that when something comes, we don't have to rush to do anything. We will have already prepared everything. The Lord is speaking through how many people? How many people end up saying the same thing about the sun, about the earth, about geology? Why are so, even the people that don't agree, they're still looking into the weather. They're still looking into volcanoes. They're still looking into geology. Who lit that fire in them? Isn't that funny? Even when you have this guy who's arguing with this guy about the impact of the sun, they're still searching for anomalistic happenings on the sun. They're still looking for these problems in the earth. Even though they don't agree with each other, they're still looking for the issue. What you should look at is these guys are looking for issues in the earth. Now, who put lit that fire in them? You know who's doing that. 
Your father's doing that. So you have all these people out there looking for the exact same thing. They may see slightly different from the other, but they're still looking for the same thing. Why all of a sudden are so many looking for it? And why all of a sudden? Because it wasn't like this for a long time. Now all of a sudden everybody is looking for that thing that's bothering them. You better believe something is on the horizon. Because if you don't believe it, you will not use your time wisely and make proper preparations as per the Lord's instruction. And you're going to be caught unawares. These things will happen in a time you're not looking for. Them. They will come upon you as a thief in the night and take everything you have. God let that fire in them. People have played long enough. You're the ones that will experience the real deal. Whether you accept that or not. You're it. And that time is now. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. Okay, everybody, let me give you the other part to uh, today. Boy, everything converges on this day. President Biden approved billions of dollars in weapons to Israel. You guys do know that. That was always going to take place today. Here's the problem. All of you know, all of you know, that since the Israel-Hamas war has begun, that there have been demonstrations in the USA concerning Hamas and those who are sensitive to Hamas have been protesting. You guys know this. They have been attacking the Jews within America. All of you should know that. There have been some big time murders that have taken place because of it. Now that Biden has approved the weapons package to Israel, the Middle East is only going to see that one way. That the U.S. is indeed in support of Israel. And they will go forward with their plans. So not only are we dealing with solar issues, but now we're dealing with USA issues. Germany, you're not out of the woods. France is not out of the woods. This issue that we are just now starting to have with these domestic accidents, expect an increase in number of those domestic accidents. Expect it. As we have been reading Revelation, all of us should have an understanding that a dark kingdom is rising and God is going to permit it to rise and it's going to wreak havoc in the earth and it's going to be given power to wreak havoc in the earth. You all understand that. One of the big disconnects in understanding the rise of this dark kingdom is God's people. If you belong to the Lord, you belong to the Lord. And the Lord... He's already taken that responsibility to look over you. But you must determine if you belong to him or not. That will be determined by your obedience of heart towards him. It's not by works. No. Nope. Doesn't matter how many good things you do. If you have a desire to obey the Lord, It's because in your heart, you have him above everything. 
if you're trying to comply just to escape the danger, it's not going to work out too well for you. They did that in times past, and their fate was horrible. In fact, they were punished more harshly than anybody else. Those who tried to make a deal with the Lord. Those who tried to do everything right to escape doom. They did not escape it. That's your choice. If the Lord is in fact your Lord, then seek to obey him. When you do that, you're off limits, period. Many people want free from small influences in the earth, and haven't you got it yet? If you play around with this other stuff, you're prone to it. Once you cut it off, you go headlong in faith towards Christ. Then you have a hedge around you. You do not have a hedge around you when you walk out of that hedged area. You can't do everything you want to do in this world and think you're going to get away with it. No one gets away with anything despite what everything seems like. No murderer has gotten away with murder. No rapist has gotten away with rape. Nobody has gotten away with anything. In every case... The bill comes due. You know that, don't you? The bill comes due. The only way to avoid paying that ultimate bill is through Christ. No one can trick their way into that. No one will cling to him to escape danger. It's not going to happen that way. If you cling to Christ, it will be because you recognize he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He is, in fact, the Messiah. If you cling to him to escape the danger, you're not escaping the danger. You're tempting the Lord your God. Only through truth can a person be a child of God. Only through truth. If anybody is trying to comply with the word of God to escape danger... They've already messed up. Because that's disingenuous. And they won't escape anything. They won't. You see, the bill is coming due. As we expect, more conditions to rise in the earth they will begin to concentrate in the areas we talked up today, big time. And people will pay the consequences. They will. I hope is that we can all encourage each other to remain sincere. And for those who are not quite sincere yet, that they may find sincerity with the Messiah. That they can experience what true deliverance is. What being lifted up is. What a hedge is for real. The only way anybody finds out about a hedge is when danger comes and danger is coming. We find out about God's love and grace. We're placed in a situation where everybody is turned against us and those days are coming. The days people read about for so long are finally upon them. They can ignore it. It's not going to stop that time from taking its toll. All of what people talk about 2012. 
what they expected the weather to be like, the earth to be like. It's happening right before your eyes. It's unfolding. And it's increasing. I gave somebody a piece of advice, and I continue to give the same advice so that you guys don't frustrate yourselves. Lots of people will look at folks in their family and say, I have a word for them. Pause for a moment. I mean, let me give you a piece of my instruction the Lord has given me. I will not go to a deaf person and expect them to hear anything. I'm not going to a blind person to show them anything. People choose if they're deaf or blind. They don't have to be that way. Healing is in the land. If a person is blind or deaf, you can speak until you're blue in the face. They will not hear what you have to say. They're not going to see what you have to show. Now you can waste your time and continue to go back to the person and provoke that individual. As far as me, the Lord said, no, no more. If the Lord does not heal them of that blindness or of their deafness, they will not be able to hear or see. In every case, the Lord orchestrated salvation in a person's life. In every case. Compliment those who desire to hear and who desire to see. Even the Lord said, those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. He never once said, those who don't have ears, let them hear. That's not what he said. He said, those who have ears, let them hear. So what about the ones who don't have ears to hear? They will not hear it. And the message is not for them. Somebody says, how do I destroy my will? You cannot. But you can bring yourself under subjection. When that subjection is real, you're going to find that you align with Christ easily. I'm telling you that from experience. I asked the Lord one time, too, to destroy my will so I wouldn't make these dumb mistakes I used to make so long ago. Even some now. The Lord's not going to destroy your will. You're being able to obey the Lord is based upon authenticity. I've come to learn that a person will do what a person wants to do. And whatever a person wants to do, they're going to find themselves doing. What you desire the most is what you'll end up doing. So then when your desires for the most high and for holiness, you're going to end up doing it. You will have a fight along the way. But you'll end up doing it. Christ has come for all those areas that you would fall short in. Remember that. The blood of the Lamb flows, represents a washing for all those areas you would fall short in. Now, to fall short means you do not like the deeds you produce. That means when you find yourself yet again entrapped by a certain situation, you react a certain way as unpleasing to the Lord and you see it. The Lord knows your heart. He knows. He knows your heart. He already knows. But for you to have your will as important, no one is forced into the kingdom. No one is forced to hell. No one. People are going to end up being in the place they desire the most. You say, how would a person desire hell? 
because he desired the darkness in the world that is born of hell itself. Those who desire righteousness, they end up shunning everything but righteousness. They push everything away but righteousness. They stop playing games. They take responsibility for their actions. All responsibility. One keen and notable thing is they stop blaming. A person that blames is a person who's not ready to take responsibility. When a person is truly ready to take responsibility, they stop blaming anybody and everybody. They will not blame a soul for anything that has happened in their life. They assume whole responsibility. When that happens, that person is not playing games. That person is ready to stand. Responsible vessels of the Lord do stand. But you have to walk away from the world first. And that must be your choice. All of us are prodigal sons. All of us are. All of us have gone through the same process. All of us have. We chose to go back to the Lord freely of our own accord. We did. And in that choice, the Messiah did honor that choice and empowered us to complete our steps in that choice. It is always the Messiah that will be the strength of your walk. The Lord will, but he does not control desire. He will not take away your will. That's an important part of you, to be able to do whatever you choose, to go in any direction you want, so that in if you turn to the Messiah, you did so of your own accord. That's important. That is critically important. So, Mr. Mike, would the eclipse make these dark spirits and entities more active? It seems like it did last time. Well... The last eclipse that we had, I do, I do believe they are appointed times from the Most High. Because I believe God created everything. I don't believe in the heavens like the average person does. You could say I was re-educated by something other than the world. So I don't believe in the celestial realm like everybody else does. The Lord said everything in motion to mark his appointed times. An eclipse is one of his appointed times. But I'm also very careful not to add things. Not to add speculation to his appointed times. In fact, if you notice, I kind of veer away from saying anything about his appointed times. And the reason why is due, and that's by respect. The Lord has appointed specific things for each time he dictates. It is up to him to reveal it. I do not want to mislead anybody concerning God's appointed times, and so I normally leave those things alone. I've learned a long time ago things can seem right and wholesome and everything else, but they can absolutely be wrong. Things can seem rational, right? The puzzle pieces fit and everything else, but we can be absolutely 100% wrong. And when it comes to God's appointed times, let God reveal it until he reveals it to all of us. He did that on purpose. When God reveals something, he does it for all of us, not for just two or three of us, but for all of us. So I kind of dance around those things in his appointed times. I can, however, tell you on occasion, what men are planning. The witchcraft they intend to raise on that day. They will utilize every appointed time for their witchcraft. And we know that in the Bible, we hear a phrase that says, he will cause craft to prosper in his hand. That we do know.
signed room with Henry? No. It's a high. It's a very April 8th. Right? Listen, any total solar eclipse. Any total solar eclipse is an appointed time by the Father for that specific space. Expect people to always make a mockery of God's appointed times. Satan has a strong desire to take what belongs to the Most High, what is sacred to the Most High, and cause us to defile it. So that if we ever curse a day, we curse the doings of the Messiah. Now why a CERN may start up on the 8th, right? While they may do their rituals on the 8th, they have a high council meeting on the 8th. They have their high priest's ceremonies on the 8th, their little Satan priests, right? They have their declaration day and entertainment on the 8th. Which is when they say little, they do incantations, rituals, and rites over music and movies. Their hope is to have a demonic entity follow every copy of every single song. Every release of every single movie. Now, that may seem wild to you guys, but that's the way they do it. So that a feeling is associated with every single song to cause people to crave it. And it works. Just in case you say that does not work, yes, it does work. It most certainly works. But they do those as a mockery on God's appointed days. Satan will always make a mockery of every appointed time of the Most High. He tries to undo sacred things, like sending false virgins before the coming of Christ. He makes a mockery of kingdoms, like sending and organizing false kingdoms prior to the everlasting kingdom. He's the one that came up with all these extra areas of faith. Not our father. He did that. He is the author of confusion. And that's exactly what he calls us. He is the father of lies. And that's his premise. And he will utilize that in, until he can't do it anymore. Expect that. Expect it. That's why I give no credence to things of men. Because men are influenced by spirits other than the Holy Spirit. When they do things in this world. Now I've already seen behind the curtain. So they won't fool me on their doings. I just pray that you guys are not fooled. Satan is the one that explains all things of the Father to a person. God doesn't do that. God will say, do not steal. Satan is the one that tells you why you shouldn't steal. Haven't you noticed? Huh? God says, don't eat of the tree of good and evil. Satan is the one that told them why God said not to eat of the tree of good and evil. Haven't you noticed that pattern throughout the entire word of God? And what are men prone to do? They're prone to be disobedient because when God tells us something, it's very difficult for a person to say yes or no. They say, why? Satan is the one that influences a person to say, why? Satan is the one that gives extra details. When a person is obedient, they don't need the details. They simply obey. And all God's children are obedient. When you're dealing with an obedient child, they never say why. They simply say yes. Satan is the one that gives the extra details. Satan does that. So be wary of that. When the Lord turned and he said, come follow me to many people. What would have happened if one of them would have said, why? That's a challenge. In the world, that's okay. That is disrespectful to the Most High. We should know now that the Lord will have you follow by faith first, and then he'll disclose everything to that person. After they follow by faith.
Those who need to know why, they need proof. They need a sign. That's what proof is, a sign. It is a wicked generation that seeks for a sign. Somebody asked me something about, does it matter when Christ was crucified? No, it doesn't. It matters who accepts the crucifixion. Who accepts that gift given? Don't get caught up in the details. That's like Saturday and Sunday. If Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, then anybody who resides in Christ is a keeper of the Sabbath, and that Sabbath is every single day, not just on a Saturday or a Sunday. You see how men are failing. Through their complex thinking, they have become but fools, just like the Lord said they would have. Why? Because they're spiritually blind. They're blind. They're locked into logic. Logic is not spiritual truth. It's the same reason the experts could not see Christ. They were blind to Christ. They could not see him. And Jesus called them a brood of vipers. My advice is don't let people get you caught up in the intricacies of why God did things. Be an obedient child, knowing that after this life, after this time, you'll be fully immersed in all truth of the Most High. People, are they want that truth. And that's forbidden for them to know. They want it now. They're doing exactly what Satan is counting on them to do. To have no comfort in those decisions of the Most High. See, a true parent will say, come kids, we're leaving. Obedient children say, okay, because they trust the parent. A disobedient child will say, why? Where are you going? That's a disobedient child. A child worthy of destruction or severe correction. It is almost in today's society people can't even see. You know, I'm still shocked by disrespect from small children, from any child to their parents. Do you know that? It is a shocker to me. Most people don't even respond to it. There was a time when the parents would say, kids, come and eat. Parents have become slaves to kids. Kids, what do you want to eat as though that child is a nutritional expert? Are you kidding? I've never seen such blatant disregard of authority and disrespect as I've seen in this generation. I've never seen anything close to it. And then that translates to the living God. Because people will not follow what the Lord says. They always want to know why before they do anything. That's just like a person saying, show me a sign and then I'll comply. This is the world we live in. Be careful. Be careful in these times. Be careful. And if the Lord uses the simple things of this world to confound the wise, you might want to stay away from the intricacy that so many people dangle in front of your face. Be true to the truth the Lord has given you and respect that of all your brothers and your sisters. Folks, that's all I have for you tonight. If I come on at midnight for further explanation of what went wrong, it will be. I'll certainly be going over some of that tomorrow. Now, this is a high declaration day, too. You guys do know that. So right now, we're still in the window of, unfortunately, I had to say this, but sacrifices. Okay? With that, I'm going to say goodnight to all of you. God bless you guys. Hang in there. Encourage each other in the truth. Remember, 
an obedient child simply says yes. That's all. They simply say yes. Please remember that. Seek the Lord with all of your heart. You'll find him. Hmm? God bless and keep all of you. I got to write now. I have some explaining to do. We have some logs to keep. So I'll see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.